Hey guys, today I'm going to speak to you about uh, connecting up a geyser or hot water cylinder timer. Now they come in all shapes and sizes. This is just two examples of them. Um, yeah, this one is two, 230 volt. Uh, make sure the one you're using matches the voltage in your country. Okay, let's get started. Now this is just a testing rig that I set up. Um, your DB at home should look similar, but probably a lot more breakers in here. All you need to do is uh, to find the hot water cylinder or the geyser breaker and uh, know which one that is, so we can start putting in the timer. The one I'm using today is the Toptronic timer. It's a, uh, it says digital programmable geyser timer. It's a bit complicated if you don't know the, the procedure, just read the instructions and uh, yeah it should be straightforward enough okay let me show you how to connect this like i said what we're going to do first is to identify the the geyser or the hot water cylinder circuit now this is the one here that i'm using and uh, the main thing you want to know is where the red wire goes so we can find the black wire and if you find the black wire we can trace that back to which uh, buzz bar it is. It's either going to be on the buzz bar, on the earth leakage, but uh, we should know which one the neutral bar is, so we take the neutral for the timer from that neutral bar. In my case, it's this one. Yours should be a bit more complicated with more wires and stuff. Just trace it back to the buzz bar and uh, wire accordingly. So what I'm going to, what I'm going to do first is uh, take a neutral wire from here around to the neutral connection on the timer itself. Okay, so that's the wire from the neutral bar to the neutral on the uh, timer. Next one I'm going to do is take the live. I'm actually going to take the live to the point where my uh, existing wire, geyser wire, is connected up. I'm going to take this one out, move it to the output, output going to the geyser, and I'm going to take a wire from here around to the live. Okay, and that's that. So I've just moved the geyser wire from the geyser breaker, the hot water cylinder breaker, to the output of the timer. And then I have put a wire from the breaker around to the timer. And that's that. Okay, so I've got my power connected. And uh, I'm just going to show you quickly. I've got a light connected to the geyser circuit. It's not really a geyser circuit. But I'm just going to show you how this timer works, if you're wondering. It's got a manual button, and it's on off. It's in the off position now. If I push it, it goes to auto off, which means it's in the auto cycle mode. Um, and it's going to go on on the next on mode. And then there's an on, which means bypass. It's going to be on permanently. Auto on, which means it's going to be switching off in the next off cycle. And then it's off, which means it's going to be permanently off. It's never going to switch on. So if you do program these timers, um, don't leave it in the off position. Leave it in the auto off. Otherwise, your geyser is never going to switch on. It's going to stay off permanently. So when you walk away from the timer, make sure it's in either auto on or auto off so that it actually works on the timer. If it's in off or on, it's going to be permanently on or permanently off. Uh, just quickly, the, to program this timer, just pr press the P button for program. You can select the day. You can select the hours, the minutes, and then press the P button, button again, and you can select the off time. So the first first time you press it it goes to number two you select the on time you press it again it still shows two but this is the off time so let's make it an hour and uh, that's it you, yeah. but it's quite easy to program so yeah there you go and just leave it in either the auto on or the auto off position then you know it's going to be on the timer okay thanks for watching guys see you again